Thank you so much for that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Memorial Presbyterian Church. And today we celebrate Juneteenth. As a reminder, this was a victory of equality over slavery. Uh, God has made us all equal, but humans created differences which have been the cause of many problems. And the best and only way to fight racism is with solidarity. Just uh, an announcement and a request from Crystal in the office. Uh, she has sent out that July through September volunteer calendar so please check it for dates and make sure that you're available for the dates that are assigned to you uh, and if you can't serve uh, please let crystal know or go into realm and there are instructions for how to do that so uh, please be mindful of that also please fill out your ritual uh, of friendship uh, pad so we know who's here and if you're watching online please just do a little chat so we know who's attending church today and of course, this morning, we have the privilege and honor of welcoming Richard Moore as our guest preacher. Uh, he is an honorably retired pastor in the Winnebago Presbytery and most recently served in the First Presbyterian Church in Nina. Uh, Richard continues to be active in the Presbytery serving on the Commission of Ministry. So welcome again, Richard. So Thank happy you. to have you here with us this morning. And now I'd like to welcome Mary Lou to the pulpit for the call to worship. Please stand for the call to worship. Let every voice shout, everyone, every mouth proclaim, announce, every generation tell. Every community give witness. Every church bring to light the glory of God alive among us.
Hear these words of scripture. God is near to the brokenhearted. God saves those who are crushed in spirit. Let us join together in our common prayer of confession. Most holy and most merciful God, in your presence we must face the sinfulness of our nature and the errors of our ways, intended and accidental. You alone know how often we have failed by wandering from your path, wasting your gifts and underestimating your love. Have mercy upon us, O God. Humble us with your truth and raise us by your grace that we may more nearly be the people of Christ you have called us to be. <clears throat> The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. Let us stand and receive the assurance of God's grace. Children of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. be seated. Holy, holy, holy one, your words feed us, the word frees us, and the spirit gives us life. Grant our ears an appetite for hearing and our spirits strength for loving you. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Listen to the word of the Lord. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit. And what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, 
jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, the, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. The second lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and is what, a bo what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God who calls us to connect, inspire, and serve. I was told that <clears throat> for the children's time, there's a, a, a bucket up here for the. Were you ready? Are you going to do? Are you ready to do that? Great. Well, let me get the bucket out. When I realized that, I was sorry. I didn't have. Noisy. Does anybody have noisy they'd like to put in here? You know, I like this. Sit down. That's good. I like the idea of this bucket. And the idea is to make a joyful noise. You know, it tells us the psalmist in the Old Testament says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the land, because God wants us to serve God with gladness. So, but we put it in here, but we know that just putting it in here and making a noise isn't going to do a whole lot, right? So we take this and we, and, and we use the money uh, to help others, right? The other thing I like in Scripture, there is a verse in the New Testament that says, God loves a cheerful giver. But you know, that word cheerful is translated wrong. Well, it's not wrong, it's just... I have another translation. A hilarious giver. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Someone who just gives it a bit and puts it all in. And then it gets used to serve God in the world. So thank you for being here this morning. 
putting your gift in the bucket. I think we could make a little noise with the bucket anyway. Boy, I'm so sorry when I saw that in the bulletin that I didn't have a pocket full of pennies or change or something I could put in here and make a noise. But anyway, we made noise enough, right? So thank you for coming forward. Um, shall we have a little prayer together? All right. Dear God, we thank you for opportunities to make a joyful noise and to serve you with gladness in all that we do. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I have a question uh, for you, Tim. Can I leave this mic on and both mics can be on at the same time? Is that right? I think they're working okay right now. Okay, they're good. All right. I just want to make sure I wasn't doing something wrong. <laughs> okay. And speaking of a joyful noise, I, I love your, I wouldn't call that noise. That's me. <laughs> That's music. But it is a joyful noise, isn't it? I love it. And I, I was sitting here looking at this big recorder here, and I thought, oh, I hope she plays that. <laughs> I've never seen a recorder that huge. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> oh, no, really? Why didn't you bring it? Yeah, I guess you don't need it this morning. Okay. Well, anyway, that's great. <clears throat> Well, the idea for the sermon that I'd like to preach this morning uh, came from a Sunday a, a few years back when my wife Martha and I were vacationing in Maine. We, we vacationed, half vacationed in the past a number of years, going way, way back. And in that small community, there is a little white church, colonial-looking, New Englandish church, white clapboards. It's a summer church. Uh, 
they just open it for the summer, and, um, and, and it's set on a hill. It's an idyllic setting um, right next to a farm. In, in years gone by, the farmer uh, finally sold, and, and there are no more cows, but in years gone by, if the sermon got boring, at least you could watch the cows out the window. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, we were, we were there one Sunday, but, but I, the, the one Sunday that I was remembering was not when I was preaching. Uh, Martha and I were just sitting there in the pew as worshipers. The preacher for that Sunday, they have guest preachers all summer long, and uh, the preacher for this Sunday was uh, from nearby and I think somewhat more evangelical than I am. And uh, I don't know how he managed this, but he seemed to have brought a lot of people with him. Maybe there were congregants from his church. I don't know. So the church was nice and full. And uh, as he began to preach, he explained that this was not going to be any ordinary sermon, not this Sunday. This was going to be a Bible study sermon. And, and then he said he was going to talk about that passage that we just had read this morning from Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, that begins, live by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. And then the passage uh, that he was going to, uh, to have us study uh, goes on to name the nine fruit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. He was going to lift up all nine of these qualities one at a time. And not only that, he was going to invite the congregation to discuss each one of them. Count them love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All nine of them. OMG, I said to myself, <laughs> this is going to be interesting and long. We're going to be here for a while. People in the pews aren't the only ones who don't like the service to last over an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I must confess, though, the experience turned out to be better than I expected. For one thing, uh, the things that people were saying were interesting and, I think, well taken. And for another, the service didn't go beyond an hour. Well, you know how Mainers are. They don't speak, they don't talk as much as, as Midwesterners. So it worked out. And all in all, I thought it went pretty well. So I bet I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm going to try that this morning on you. <laughs> and we will discuss each one of those nine fruits. Well, no, don't worry. I won't ask you to do that, but I have something else planned. We'll get to that in a few moments. But back to the service in Maine. As the discussion went on, my mind began to wander just a bit. And I was remembering when I was in seminary and what I learned about the, the Paul's letter to the Galatians that absolutely surprised me. I, I never had realized this in the past. The Galatians were not Paul's favorite people. The Philippians were the number one choice. He trips all over himself saying nice things about the Philippians. But the Galatians, bottom of his list. Bottom of his list. How do we know that? Well, if you read the entire letter, you can see that it's sprinkled with pretty much a scolding, pretty much his disfavor about some of the things they were up to. And if you look at the beginning of the letter, you will see that the Galatians don't get Paul's usual commendation. Now, when I talk about that, this is what I mean. The letter to the Philippians begins with, I thank my God every time I remember you praying with joy because of your sharing in the gospel. And 
To the Corinthians, he writes, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. And the rest of Paul's letters begin similarly with gratitude and commendation. But not in the letter to the Galatians. In fact, he starts by saying how frustratingly disappointed and unhappy he is with these people. I'm astonished. You can see him waving his fist, can't you? I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ. Not only have they been listening to false teachers and following them, but also their behavior was less than spectacular. Well, we can say it was pretty pretty low behavior. Um, and it, it was hurting the community more than it was helping it. So in the 16th verse of chapter 5, Paul pleads with them to change their ways. Live by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, when Paul uses the word flesh, we usually think of it in a very narrow context. It just kind of, we, think, we start thinking sexual stuff and, and immorality. Paul uses it very broadly. Well, you can see some of it if you read the passage. But he tends to use it to describe human willfulness. That quality in people that tends to be self-centered, self-serving, self-indulgent, and self-absorbed. But Paul is smart. He knows that simply talking about this is not going to help them understand. Simply by saying, well, you need to live by the Spirit. That's what you need to do. So he needs to show them what, what that might look like. And so he says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, we could preach a sermon on each one of them, couldn't we? But, but I'm not going to do that right now. What I will tell you is when I was back teaching confirmation classes, I tried my best to get the members of the class to memorize the fruit of the Spirit. I asked them to do this because these fruits, these qualities, are a critical sign of what the 8th century mystic John of Damascus referred to as the Holy Presence. When we experience any or all of these fruits, it is a powerful indication that God is actually getting through to us, that God is at work in us. Well, here's what I used to tell the kids. All these qualities are gifts from God's Spirit. We don't create them or cause them. We don't make them happen so much as we let them happen in us and through us. To put it in another way, we are the channels through which these gifts flow in us and into the lives of others. That's what grace is all about. When we see any of these fruits, these qualities in ourselves and in others, it is evidence of God's indwelling holy presence. On the other hand, I would tell them it's easy enough not to, open, not to be open channels for these gifts, to, to resist them, to set them aside, to do something else. It's kind of like, I like to tell them this, that it's like a human body with its arteries. And you know, those arteries can get clogged with cholesterol. When that happens, the life-giving blood gets interrupted as it goes through. And if it gets too blocked, well, you know what the result can be. It could be a stroke. It could be a heart attack. It could be something even 
words. And then I would tell them with my tongue in cheek, I would say to them, sin is the cholesterol of the soul that keeps the good stuff from getting through. So, now I've got some homework for you. Memorize the fruit of the Spirit. Maybe you all, if you didn't get it up here, there's inserts in the back you can pick up. That's why I got these inserts for you. Memorize these. I'll tell you why in a minute, but memorize them. Not right now. You're going to have to study it. You're going to have to work on it. I am going to be coming back and preaching on the 17th of July. There will be a test. <laughs> we will see how well you're doing with the fruit of the Spirit. Because, you know, you need to know these things if you're going to understand what it's all about. I would say this much. I know maybe not everybody would agree with me, but I'll say it anyway. These verses, these fruits, are more important to know by heart than even John 3.16, than even the 23rd Psalm. And I'd say with all that we've been through these last many months, and you know how hard it's been, and with all the political divisions and polarization, all of the things that are going on, they're spinning around in our world. I think the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is more important than ever. We need the fruit of the Spirit more than ever to flow through us and into the lives of those around us. People need to see that. You know, we talk about the Incarnation <clears throat> as being God being manifest in Jesus or in the Christ. But the Incarnation is actually broader than that, for it can continue in each one of us. The other day I read a quote that resonated with me in relationship to who we're called to be. It was from one of the co-moderators. Uh, he will now be a past co-moderator of the General Assembly of our church. Uh, his name is Greg Bentley. And he writes this. We are not just passive spectators in the symphony of life, but rather we are moral agents who have been called by God to shape the world in such a way that it reflects the very heart and character of God. So here's what I think all this means. As the Holy Presence flows through us, we can become a Holy Presence in the world. And I say to you, oh, how desperately we need to do that.
Do you have any joys or concerns that you would like to share at this time? We're good? We're good. All right. So I would like to ask you to respond to the prayers when I say, God, in your mercy, the response is hear our prayer or our prayers. Which, which do you say in this church? Prayers or prayer? Whatever you like to say, say it at that time. God, in your mercy, let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for the beauty of your creation that surrounds us, for your love that enfolds us, and for your spirit that compels us to adore and serve you. God, in your mercy. As we gather, gracious one, at this time and in this place, we remember all that is going on about us in this world. We pray for those who bear the scars and trauma of slavery even yet in our land. And even as this is a celebration of Juneteenth, guide us, give us strength to continue to work for equality, for justice, for every human being. God, in your mercy. We remember, too, all those whose lives have been crushed and challenged by the fires in New Mexico, by the floods across this country, by storm damage. We pray for those who will be helping to bring relief and who will help to rebuild. God, in your mercy. We pray for the people in Ukraine and the people in Russia. We pray that this terrible war will come to a swift end. We pray for those whose lives have been so devastated from this war. And again, strength, help, and guidance to those who will step in and give help. God, in your mercy. We pray for the church on this day that it may work diligently to help and heal this broken world. We remember also our brothers and sisters in other religions and faith practices. And we pray that we may all work together for the common good, that we may bring about the kingdom we so often pray for. God, in your mercy. Yeah. On this Father's Day, Holy One, we pray for fathers and mothers and all families of all sorts and of all sizes. Give wisdom, strength, tenderness, and love beyond measure. We also pray for uncles and aunts, for grandparents and greats, and all who give care to children. Nor would we forget those who would like to have been parents, but for one reason or another cannot be. God, in your mercy, Amen. give help and healing, O God, to the grieving the sick, the lonely, the helpless, and all who are troubled in any kind of way. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Indeed, we ask you to hear our prayers as we make them in the name of your beloved who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Out of the abundance of God's own life, we have received the abundance of God's creation, God's word, and God's love. Now out of the generos generosity of our hearts, let us give back to God the offerings of our life and our labor. Let us stand with one voice and pray with one voice. Triune God, through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, you bring hope to the despairing, healing to the sick, and release from bondage to all who are oppressed by sin and evil. Through baptism into Christ, you cover us with your love, we thank you that in the flood you wash away all that separates us from you and one another. We thank that in this life we are set free to proclaim good news to others. Direct our gifts to fulfill your purpose as we await the time when all creation is one in your love. By the grace of Jesus Christ, and the community of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now as you go forth into the world, remember I will be back on the 17th. <laughs> and in the meantime, love and serve God with all that you say, all that you do, all that you are. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of God's Spirit be and abide with you and with those whom you love and with those whom you struggle to love this day, this night, and even forevermore. Amen.